Hello everyone, I want to make a quick follow-up video which is mostly just going to be off the cuff and uh, way less scripted than the last one so to say. First of all, thank you everyone for all of the support, it's pretty crazy to see these kind of views and numbers and comments considering I've only ever uploaded a single video on this platform. Over the weekend I have been working on a video where I further go into more things that I consider bad practice in other YouTube content creators videos, but the more I worked on this stuff I realized that it's very negative and I don't really want to make this type of video. I still believe that there's bad practice in these videos and I still think there's a lot of improvements that can be done in the terms of how builds are marketed and how they are tested and how they are presented to the viewers. However, I don't think it's a good way to specifically critique individual builds. And for that reason I'm going to instead upload videos that provide knowledge about core game mechanics as well as explaining different frames in a way that is understandable regardless of your current Warframe knowledge. The idea is essentially that I'm going to try and lead by example instead of making all of these negative videos. However, I'm not perfect, which is made abundantly clear in the last video, because you guys have pointed out a lot of things that could have been done better and I'm also not very happy with many aspects of the video in hindsight. So, living by the example that I myself wish to set, I definitely feel there are some things that I need to correct and or elaborate on regarding my last video before I can move on to making proper educational content in Warframe. Starting with the most uh, egregious of errors, so to say, in around 4 minutes in the video I say that the Acolyte only has 4 corrosive procs. This is because Acolytes can only receive up to 4 stacks of any status. I think impact here is the only exception, I think it goes up to 6 times or maybe 7. This is pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I wanna apologize for making such an error and not catching that while editing the video. And I was considering pulling the video down and remaking it, however, I hope you can forgive me here because for some reason this thing just decided to blow up way more than I would have ever expected, so I did not really want to touch anything. I did put a correction in the comment, but I'm not able to pin comments for some reason because you have to give YouTube your ID or wait two months for other forms of verifications. Overall, the point is not entirely moot, because if you wanted to fully strip an Acolyte, you would need to have 5 Emerald Shards, or 3 Taos and 1 Normal Shard in order to fully strip an Acolyte, which just doesn't seem worth it to me in any circumstance whatsoever. Next up, I want to address a common misconception that I've seen in the comments, which I think might be because I've not been that clear on the certain issue that I'm talking about, so I want to catch up here and talk to you guys about what I actually mean when I think that this build is not worth it for the vast majority of people. A lot of you have pointed out that Brozyme specifically points out in the video that this build is overkill and unnecessary. This is exactly what I have a problem with and I'm not sure if I've been clear enough on that in the first video. The problem that I have is that overkill, what does that mean? What does it mean that a build is overkill? According to Steam, only 10% of people even reach Mastery Rank 8 in order to use Helmet in general. Along with that, what is the average Warframe player? 50% of the people don't even make it past Mastery Rank 1. When you release a video and you call your build overkill or unnecessary, that can have vastly different meanings to different players of the game. This is why I think that this is bad practice. It's far easier to use the levels and the math that the game provides to everyone its public knowledge and take some extra time to properly test your build and specifically state where it's going to shine the most and where it might not be necessary whatsoever. Rosheim does this to some degree, he mentions certain levels within the video, but there's not ever really any evidence put behind the claim. The entire video of his regarding an armor strip Mesa is showcasing footage where he's not armor stripping anything except maybe I think one specific officer in the simulacrum got armor stripped. Let's look at this from a little funny analogy. If I bought a new Ferrari and I showed it off to my friend, would I want to show him what the car can do in inner city speed limits or would I go on the highway and hit the gas pedal? There are a lot of builds that showcase insanely high theoretical potential only to then do the same Kuva survival against a level 130 steel pev enemy. It makes no sense and it's bad practice because it does not show the build in its full potential. In Brozheim's case specifically, towards the end of the video, there's a single sentence saying that you would run into roadblocks at level 2000 if you ran his build without the corrosive proc shards. In my opinion, that is something that should have been covered way earlier in the video and in much more detail, because he quite literally says that these shards are what allow him to make this build. 
and this has consequences. You can find two or three people, I think, or more in my video that say they wish they knew this earlier, that say they wasted these green shards and never really armor strip anything in the content that they play. Archon shards are expensive. It's measured in weeks how many you can get, even more so for combined shards or tarforged shards. The thing is that if you simply put more time into the video or in your build, you can avoid all of these issues by specifically testing it in different circumstances and showing actual evidence recording of you doing what you're talking about. Not doing so is a sign of complacency. I'm not saying that these people have ill intentions or wish to deceive the community. But what I am saying is that you need to take the time out of your day to properly showcase this stuff. Especially if you're one of the fortunate people that can work and live off of Warframe full time. As a final thought on creators, I'm not attacking anyone here. Critique is not inherently disrespectful and I'm not trying to start a fight or whatever. I think that these are problems and I think even more so that they are easily fixed. It's a lot easier for a single content creator to be a bit more specific and use a bit more time than to expect thousands or 100,000 viewers or whatever to fully understand the video as it is intended. There is no hurt in being more specific. For the rest of the video I just want to directly address some of your comments. There has been a lot of good feedback and criticism that I could use to improve myself and other builds, so I want to directly address that. Before I get started with that though, I want to make clear that everything I say is an opinion piece, including the videos before this one. I like to build Warframes in this way. I think that overall people would benefit of being a bit more specific and a bit more practical, but overall it's just an opinion. I don't claim or consider myself to be the best Warframe builder or anything like that. With that in mind, for this topic and all of the topics I'm going to discuss in the comments now with you guys, it's an open forum. There is a lot of other knowledgeable people that can share useful information, so if you think you have something useful to say, comment on the video, interact with other members, and so on. Right, so getting started, the first thing I want to address is all of the comments mentioning that these armor stripping mechanics are really valuable in the circuit. I want to be a bit contrarian here and say that it does not really matter all that much and there's two reasons. The first one is that the circuit basically functions in a vacuum, nothing else is like the circuit in this game. You can have a really bad status weapon, slap corrosive shards on whatever frame you're running that weapon with and after a couple rounds of circuit with the right decrease you can make it an armor stripping monster. So yes, two green shards on Mesa in this specific scenario will armor strip after the right decrease. That being said, I still don't think it's worth it, because if you think about the reason why you armor strip in the first place, it doesn't really make sense to go for armor strip in the circuit. The reason why we armor strip is because we are no longer dealing damage. This is either because our weapons fall off and or because the enemies simply become too tanky. Armor stripping in itself is not a requirement. The enemy does not become invulnerable simply because they have armor. The circuit with its decrease allows for insane damage scaling that is not possible anywhere outside of the game. For that reason we come back to the same issue that anything, almost anything, will die before you armor strip them, whether that be inside the circuit or outside of it. Realistically, yes, if you go to maybe level cap or something slightly below level cap you could end up stripping enemies effectively, but how often, once again the same question, how often do you do a circuit to level cap? That doesn't mean it's bad or that it will never be useful to do these kinds of things. I'm not saying that this isn't valuable for people that want to do this kind of stuff. I'm not saying that I don't want people to spend insane amount of resources to min-max their builds. I'm specifically talking about the presentation and the lack thereof when it comes to these build videos. Next up, there were people saying they got value out of the green shards outside of the circuit in specific things like farming Void Cascade for Arcanes. And that's great, if you can get value out of this in your own build, it's a good thing. I'm not trying to say that this will never be useful. I simply want to state how wasteful this is for the vast majority of scenarios. This is a topic I see with armor stripping in general. There were people mentioning that they were armor stripping people in Netracel missions or in Steel Path on the new open world, which I don't want to spoil here just in case there's some newer people watching. There is a point to be made that just because you can armor strip, it doesn't mean that you should. If I can instantly kill an enemy, I don't need to armor strip him. If I have to drastically lower my damage just to armor strip him, what's the point? If I can kill him with 4 procs or with 8 procs, why would I ever need 4 procs if it doesn't translate into realistic time to kill? 
I feel like armor stripping and things like red crits have become such overrated things in this community and are often misrepresented because of that. Once again, we armor strip because we do not do enough damage. If we already have enough damage, there is no point to armor strip. If I can kill an enemy in half a second, why would I ever want to armor strip him just to kill him in 100 milliseconds less? It's fun, but to call it practical and throw around these terms as if it's a necessity just doesn't make sense to me and I think that's just overall bad for the community. And that really is what the initial video was about. I simply would like to see more consistent testing, more evidence-based testing where you actually see what is being claimed in the video. And if you do something for fun, which is perfectly fine, that's what it's all about at the end, just be clear exactly what is absolutely needed and what is absolutely a bonus. Because at the end of the day, a build video is a recommendation. It's almost like a sales pitch in some sort, otherwise you wouldn't really upload it. You upload a build to share with others and all of us are secretly hoping that people take inspiration from our builds, because that's cool to see. But that also means that you have a responsibility to make the build actually useful and thought out. Because people will copy it, the more so if you have a large audience. People will follow what you say, people look up to you. And that's a good thing, but it's a double-edged sword. If you do something stupid, so will the viewers. And for that reason, I urge anyone that makes builds and releases them to an audience to put a bit more thought behind it and just put that extra bit of time to be extra precise. Because at the end of the day, whether you want it or not, you are indirectly responsible and you are directly influencing people and what they spend their resources and time on. I hope that after this video, my point is a little bit more clearer. I realized in hindsight that I kind of went a bit wishy-washy on some topics in the first video, but to give myself a little bit of slack here, I kind of threw that together at 4 in the morning. I want to finish off the video by once again saying thank you to everyone who subscribed and commented and watched the video. I want to talk a bit about myself and what you can expect from the future. Most important thing from the start I want to mention is that I'm not going to be able to upload daily or even close to that. I'm aiming for maybe one or two videos a week right now and that is because I work a pretty demanding full-time job in big tech and I'm also pretty into fitness which takes a lot of time as well. For that reason I'm not going to be able to follow a strict upload schedule. I'll do my best but although it is my dream to make it as a YouTuber just have a little patience with me because the upload schedule will improve once I can quit my full-time job. For the foreseeable future on this channel I will upload Warframe content, mostly educational content, maybe some cinematic things. I have a lot of stuff that I want to do for Warframe. I do love this game. I mean, you know, I've been playing it for over 10 years almost. But I also want to make clear from the start that I'm not a Warframe only channel. I don't want to be a Warframe YouTuber, although I want to be part of the community. And that is because I have a lot of plans. My main channel is actually supposed to be Norshine, but it is now a lot smaller thanks to all of you. And in that channel I want to make videos more broad about gaming and anime and other nerd stuff, maybe some tech oriented stuff. But these videos take a lot of time and I don't really see myself being able to do them properly until I can quit my full time job, therefore this channel exists. And that's all I really have to say about this topic, thank you guys for watching. The next videos will most likely be either educational content about how to maximize damage or it's going to be specific frame videos and by that I mean I want to make videos that explain how a frame works, how you build it at different stages of the game, how the mechanics work, how some of the hidden mechanics work, all sorts of Warframe nerd stuff so to say. So if you're interested in that please do subscribe, thank you once again to anyone who already has and I'll see you next time.